I got involved in HIV in the very, very beginning. Phil Wilson is a prominent HIV and AIDS activist who has dedicated his life to ending the epidemic. Our friends were getting sick and our friends were dying. If you were a person of conscience, you had to get involved. And so we got involved in the beginning days because we felt we needed to know. We felt that it was going to be about us. Phil founded the Black AIDS Institute and In the Life has covered his work over the years as he has mobilized and educated communities of color. Racism particularly is a player in the HIV AIDS pandemic because race drives so many things in this country. Black communities were slow to respond to the AIDS epidemic in the beginning because the AIDS epidemic was mischaracterized as a white gay disease. What do you think it will take for us to develop a national AIDS strategy in this country? Particularly now, we should be talking about the AIDS epidemic in the most impacted population in the United States. No, uh, there's no place else where, no, there's no other population in the United States that is as impacted with HIV than black America. Now, Phil is appearing in a new frontline documentary, Endgame, AIDS in Black America. Around the country, in gay communities like San Francisco's Castro District, word spread about the mysterious killer disease. But on the other side of the bay, in Oakland, it was a different story. That bridge really is a divider. They are literally two different worlds. When a black person would go to the door of the white gay clubs in San Francisco back in the 80s and 90s, we would be asked for two, three, four pieces of ID before we could get in. We weren't considered a hot spot. It was San Francisco, even though we were burning too. All I can say about the difference in the early 80s from San Francisco and Oakland is that it was silence. While in San Francisco they were acting up, literally, and talking about HIV, over in Oakland it was silence and fear. One of the things that is most powerful about this film is that there is powerful storytelling going on, you know, that we get to tell our story in our words and our voices that reflect our reality. And some of those realities are very, very harsh. In the 1980s, Jesse was an A student, a National Guardsman, and a model. And he was hiding. The African American community, and a lot of communities, have stigma around being gay. I had an uncle and I remember being in the car with him and he pointed to an obviously gay man and said, I hate them. And this is my uncle, was, it was my favorite uncle and it crushed me. This film attempts to look at the social determinants of health. It's critically important because we're not going to end the AIDS epidemic. We're not gonna get to the end game uh, by a magic bullet or a magic pill. It's not gonna get us there. No, we're going to get there when we begin to figure out how to celebrate, embrace, value all of our lives and how we make a commitment to design structures and systems uh, that value folks' lives. When asked how close to an endgame we are, Phil had this to say. Particularly in black communities, we are a resilient folk, uh, but we are at a deciding moment in the trajectory of the AIDS epidemic. We clearly have the tools to end the epidemic. You know, the question is no longer, can we end AIDS? The question now is, will we end AIDS? You know, will we use these tools expeditiously, efficiently, compassionately? You know, will we come together? Will each and every one of us do our part? You know, because when we do our part, you know, there is nothing that we are not greater than. You know, we were greater than the Middle Passage. We were greater than slavery. We were greater than Reconstruction. We were greater than Jim Crow. We were greater than Hurricane Katrina. You know? And together, you know, we will be greater than AIDS.